Bristol County Sheriff Paul Haro is entering his sixth month on the job and continues to make what he sees are needed changes within the department. Back in April, the sheriff dealt with an inmate uprising that was quickly brought under control, but resulted in thousands of dollars in damages at the Dartmouth facility. The incident revealed key flaws in security at the jail, which will be addressed with additional state funding. We're going to be putting locks on doors and toilets and cells in all of the 11 of the 21 housing units here at Dartmouth. We have the state's attention. They're being very cooperative. Uh, the Division of Capital Asset Management has uh, been working with us and it's government. Everything moves very slowly. And so this isn't something where we're just are calling in a plumber to put toilets and cells or a locksmith to put locks on doors. This is a multi-million dollar project to do this right. It's probably gonna cost in the neighborhood of 10 to $12 million to do both the locks on doors and the toilets and cells in half of the jail. Like literally half of our jail at Dartmouth doesn't, uh, half of the housing units, 11 of the 22 don't have um, locking cell doors and that's just really kind of dangerous. Sheriff Ferro says he's moving forward with plans to shutter the Ash Street Jail in New Bedford, which houses transitional inmates from local communities with a targeted completion in late 2024. We have to create the capacity here uh, for the regional, uh, because we're holding people from the region, that's why we call them regionals. Um, but then we also have to create about 100 more locking cell units. Uh, that way we can bring those inmates back from Ash Street. Because those inmates, and as I was saying, they're a unique population. They have enemy issues, gang issues, um, sometimes staff conflict issues. And so they have to be kept in uh, like cells that have lot, single cells that have locking doors. We can't do that right now here. So in order to bring those inmates back from Ash Street, we have to um, put locks on doors. So the locks on doors are, the main goal is to close Ash Street, but also helps us make for a much safer uh, facility, both for the inmates and the correctional staff. When Sheriff Ferro took office in January, the jail was short approximately 100 correctional officers, resulting in additional overtime and officer burnout. Thanks in part to offering incentives for new recruits, the sheriff is hopeful that the ranks of officers will be closer to full capacity sometime next year. When I started, we had a new correctional officer class graduate in G uh, February with five people. Five people, and they started in December. So my first correctional officer class started with 25, and we graduated 22. We have another correctional officer class coming in uh, that has 47 people right now. So we were in single digits for years, year after year after year. Now, arguably, we have the largest correctional officer classes out of any jail in the state. You know, I don't think anybody else is putting out 47 people at the beginning of a uh, CO class. So, you know, rec recruitment's been going well, really well, but now we have to retain people and changing the work conditions here, improving them for COs or improving them for inmates, which then spills over to the COs. That's, you know, next on the agenda. Sheriff Ferro is also looking at improving efficiency of providing services to inmates. First and foremost was the hiring this month of new Director of Inmate Services, Jody Hockert-Lotz. What we have her doing here is looking over all the inmate services, uh, medical, um, food and commissary, uh, post-release issues like housing, health care and a job, uh, programming such as anger management, sex offender programs, vocational and education programs. Um, and so she oversees all of that. Um, also, you know, the religious services and volunteer services. So all of that is under her. And I've restructured this in a way that it makes it so that people who have um, a job to do can do it and just do that because a lot of people were spread too thin. They were an expert working with inmates, that's certainly true, but they, we didn't have anybody who really is an expert at placing inmates in a job or an expert at placing inmates in housing. And inmates are challenged with their records, so it's, you really need to specialize in that. So that's what I'm doing. Instead of being a jack of all trades, you're gonna be, you know, you're an expert at none. Now I've put these different needs into silos and that way they can really deliver a better service for reentry for the inmates. Sheriff Hero also reversed the policy of previous Sheriff Tom Hodgson that lowers the commissary commission rate at the jail from 32% to 20%.
that money has to go into the inmates. We, ha we cannot put it towards salaries or, or uh, offices or computers. It has to go to inmates in one way or another. So over the course of time, my predecessor built up about a million and a half dollars on this uh, commission and didn't put it to use towards the inmates. So some of the things I'm going to be doing with that are, um, one thing I thought was just crazy was we weren't giving inmates um, San shower sandals at time of admission. So they either had to b take a shower in a communal shower barefoot or buy their own sandals. So what I'm doing now is we're going to be using that commissary commission, uh, which is money that comes from the inmates to buy inmates shower sandals at, at time of admission. So when they come in, we give them that. It's a, it's a, a health issue. It's a humanity issue. Um, but that's something that was, you know, it, it, if, if somebody's saying, well, why are you doing that for the inmates, let them, this is, the inmates are buying these for themselves. This is their own money that's paying for these. So, you know, inmates subsidize each other. The sheriff says he's also looking to spend some of the commissary commission money to improve air conditioning in many of the cell blocks.